prosper you today. This is the day you are coming out of that affliction. This is the day you are coming out. This is the day you are coming out. One man shall say there is a casting down. I shall say there is a lifting up. Why? Because I am carrying the master. But because the donkey was carrying Jesus, he was stepping on health, stepping on victory, stepping on breakthrough, stepping on prosperity. Without a clear understanding of purpose, people invest their energy, invest their passion, doing things they were never meant to do. Poverty thinking people cry for money, fast for money, pray for money, but convenient thinking people cry for wisdom. Emmanuel is my name. The word of God is life. The word of God is power. The word of God reveals the will of God. The word of God exposes us to the mindset of God. The word of God gives us the language of God. The word of God is the seed for creating anything. The word of God releases unusual authority. The word of God is the builder of the spirit. The word of God in you determines your spiritual stature and your spiritual stamina. Join me every Thursday and Saturday for Power to Excel on Celebration TV. Thursdays and Saturdays by 7.30 p.m. for Power to Excel on Celebration TV. On Power to Excel, lives are transformed, lives are renewed, lives are revived, lives are restored by the power of God's word. Thursdays and Saturdays by 7.30 p.m. Connecting to the grace upon the life of God's oracle, Apostle Johnson Suleiman, I decree that your season changes for the best from now. Impossibilities are becoming possibilities. Every mountain of opposition against you is grinded to powder right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Always remember this. No matter what men are saying against you, so long they are not God, your words will not stand. The Lord bless you. Proverbs 28 20. A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. I read it again, Proverbs 28, verse 20. Can we all look at it, please? A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Divine intervention by the power of faithfulness. We've dealt on a couple of divine intervention strategies. We looked at divine intervention by the mystery of gratitude. We looked at divine intervention by the mystery of forgiveness. And um, this week, the Lord will just have us look at this. Divine lifting by the power of faithfulness. Can you say it after me? Say divine lifting. Uh, can you preach it back? Say divine lifting by the power of faithfulness uh, can you say it like a preacher divine lifting by the power of faithfulness can you preach it back say divine lifting by the power of faithfulness brothers and sisters dear friends one of the major lacks in our world today is faithful men and women it is easy to find gifted people. It is very easy to find people who can pray. It is very easy to find people who know business. It is very easy to find people who are skilled. But one of the major deficiencies of this generation is faithful men and faithful women. It's a major lack in our world today. It is even so bad that now employers of labor no more trust church folks once upon a time people say if you want to get a good staff go to a church if you want to get a good wife to marry go to the church but these days people would rather go outside to look for somebody to employ to look for somebody to marry than to come into the church but at the creator in the name of jesus a baptism of faithfulness is coming upon you a baptism of faithfulness is coming upon you in the name of jesus take your seat for a while too many people in our world today are living desperate lives. Everybody seems to be hustling. 
in, 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 in our desperation to make it big, we draw our faith to the gutters. In our desperation to, to strike some deals, to achieve some aims, to, to, to make sure we complete certain projects, we, we dabble into certain things that ridicule our faith. The lack of faithfulness is one major reason why many people in church are struggling. Is one major reason. Are you telling me God is no more powerful? Are you telling me God can no more restore? Are you telling me God does not answer prayers anymore? But how come lots of people in church are small? Lots of people in church are struggling. Lots of people in church are stranded. We have a lack of faithful men. Is somebody with me at all? Uh, you, I've said it again here. You, 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 can't, you can't move God with emotions. Uh, you can pray from now to next year. Roll on the floor. Tear your garments. You are not the first. But there are certain things that God must find in you to lift you. You know, there's no amount of emotions we try to express this time that men of old did not express. When they were grieved, they, they wore sack clothes. They, they, they put ashes on themselves. Uh, you've, you've never been in that dimension. So there's no amount of emotions you will express now that will intimidate God. There are certain things that God is looking out for in people before God can lift them. Is somebody with me at all? There are certain people in church, no matter how they pray, they can never be rich. It's not a curse. It's a principle. Certain people in church who no matter how they pray, they can never be rich. What happens? They pray, God opens a door. God brings an opportunity, but their lack of faithfulness closes the door. Am I communicating here? Uh, somebody employs you, you've been trusting God for a job for a long time, and they employ you the establishment. From the day you came, you had a motive. Say, me that was jobless for six years. Ah, anything I can grab, I will grab in this place. Oh. I, I, am I communicating at all? From the day you walk through the door, a motive is already in your heart. You're already strategized. How do I take advantage of these people? Prayer opens doors, but faithfulness keeps the door open. Am I communicating here? A lack of faithfulness. Lift your right hand above you. Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. Say, my father, let your word produce in my life. Let your word change me this morning. Let your word restore me this morning. Let your word revive me this morning. In the name of Jesus. Take your seat for a while. The passage we read from Proverbs 28 20 says, A faithful man shall abound with blessings. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. Which means. <laughs> God does not bless hard work like he blesses faithfulness. Is somebody getting me now? Uh, uh, God, God rewards faithfulness more than he rewards hard work. Because we have many hard working cheats. Am I communicating? We have many hard working deceitful people. So God is saying a faithful man shall abound with blessings. You study through scriptures, all the great men we've read about, all the great men we talk about. One unique quality that stood them out was faithfulness. A unique criteria, a unique quality that made them great, that made them tall, that made them enviable was faithfulness. The first person we see was David. Let's just look at these characters now. David was faithful to Saul. Despite the fact that Saul tried to kill him 21 times, David was faithful. David had opportunity to kill Saul. David came face to face with the man who was trying to kill him. And David called him my father. Eh? A man wants you dead. You came before the man, you still call him your father. Ah! David had an opportunity to kill Saul several times. He said, how can I touch God's anointed? He was not afraid of Saul. He had a faithful spirit. Am I communicating at all here? From the life of David, we throw out a principle. What is that principle? What is that principle? A faithful man never changes his character because of how he is treated. Because for a faithful man, faithfulness is a nature, not an act. 
a church woman never changes his character. I hear people say, the reason I'm not like this, people have dealt with me. The reason I've chosen not to be sincere to any person, people have dealt with me. The reason I've chosen not to be loyal to anybody, people have dealt with me. You must understand this now, that faithfulness is a nature. Faithfulness is not an act. Am I communicating at all here? You must get to a dimension where, where no human being can make you break your covenant with God. No human being is worth breaking a covenant you've reached with God. Faithfulness to you should be a covenant, not something that is conditional. Am I communicating here? <laughs> because there are people who can be faithful when you are faithful to them. Some people can be loyal to you when it appears you are good to them. Some employees can be loyal to the employer, can, 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 can take the vision of the business upon themselves so long the employer treats them well. Faithfulness should never be conditional to you. Faithfulness should become a covenant. Am I communicating here? The next person we see, Abraham. Abraham had a brutal covenant with God. He was so faithful to God and faithful to the ways of God that God called him friend. It was not by reason of his prayer he earned the relationship of friend. It was not tied to it. It was a relationship. Am I complicating here? It was not by reason of prayer. Not by reason of reading Bible. Not by reason of singing in the choir. Not by reason of coming to a, for Bible study. It was a, a product of a rela relationship that they had with the master. And God said, this one is my friend. Am I communicating here? Too many church folks want to be friends of God. But we don't have the heart of Abraham. Am I communicating at all? We don't have the heart of Abraham. Commitment to the master. Commitment to the maker. Brothers and sisters, if you will go far with God, you must be a decisive person. You are standing for God. You are standing with God. Is there a situation in your life you have worried about and prayed over with no result? Everything you are today is a result of the things you said or didn't say yesterday. It's time to take control of your life and situations. In this inspiring and destiny uplifting book written by Sule Emanuel, he shares practical insights on how to talk your way to the top. The author tells us that whatever you want God to endorse, you must first declare. What you don't reject, God cannot destroy. What you don't confess, God will not release. It is your word that makes God work. Order a copy of Talk Your Way to the Top, an anointed and insightful book written by the renowned author and pastor Sule Emanuel. This is a book with practical keys on how to talk your way to success in every area of your life. This timeless classic, Sule Emanuel shares with you seven powerful lessons to take control of your life and any situation. As a book bonus, Talk Your Way to the Top has over 150 prophetic declarations for breakthrough, supernatural provision, divine favor, fruitfulness, marital success, and lots more. This book has indeed been a tool for great testimonies all around the world. Get a copy of Talk Your Way to the Top and your testimony is next. To order for copies and have it delivered to you anywhere in the world, please call plus 234-803-577-6677. Or plus 234-705-485-1181 or plus 277-123-03530 or plus 27-110-666-342. You can also get copies at our bookshop at Omega Farm Ministry International Headquarters, Awuchi Edo State, Nigeria or Omega Farm Ministry, Ramberg, South Africa. You can also make purchases online when you visit www.sudeemmanuel.com. The electronic version of this book is also available on our website. For all inquiries, send an email to info at sudeemmanuel.com. God bless you.
of God's words, manifestation of His power and reality of the Holy Spirit. O F M, wiping out tears and restoring back to. Through the revelation of God's words, manifestation of His power and reality of the Holy Spirit. things are fair because God is not a friend of indecisive people Abraham leave your father yes sir it is a let me think about it Abraham give me your son thy only son whom thou lovest yes sir God is not a friend of indecisive people if a person will go far with God your stand with God must be clear your faithfulness to the master must be clear the Bible says in Revelation 3 verse 16. Uh, I said, because thou art lukewarm and neither hot nor cold. Therefore, I will spew you out of my mouth. God is saying you are, you are lukewarm. You are not hot. You are not cold. I am not a friend of indecisive people. You must declare your stand with me. Are you sticking with me? Whether it's good or it's bad. Have you entered an eternal covenant with me? He said, because you are neither hot nor cold. Therefore, I will spew you out the relationship of God is for decisive people people who enter a covenant with God Abraham was so loyal to God so faithful to God he never struggled with anything God told him to do but today we we, we, we live in a generation where believers we hear an instruction from God when they pray or they come to church what is being preached an instruction from God hits them they have to think about it they have to plan to do it Abraham will act before he thinks that's why he became a friend God said this one is sold out to me this one is indeed faithful to me if you want to be a friend of God you must have the heart of Abraham is somebody getting me at all here is somebody getting me here the third person we see Joseph Joseph was faithful to Potiphar extremely faithful extremely faithful and God saw the heart of Joseph and God said people like this cannot be significant in life people with this kind of, of faithful faithful heart people with this kind of loyal commitment this type cannot be small in life from the life of Joseph we see a principle that is important to take a faithful man never takes undue advantage of opportunities do you know if Joseph had stolen from Potiphar, Potiphar will not know. He won't. Read the Bible very well. The Bible says, from the account we saw in Genesis, that Potiphar put Joseph in charge of everything. That Potiphar did not even know what he had. But despite Potiphar's ignorance of his wealth, Joseph refused to take advantage. If it were a generation today, where in the, in, in the company post, you have 10 million rands, and uh, when, when somebody paid the last 3 million, it became 13 million, your employer did not know about it. Somebody else came and brought about 700,000, nobody knew about it. Somebody came again and brought 150, nobody knew about it. It becomes an opportunity. You start asking yourself, what was the last figure my boss knew about? 10 million. And people begin to scheme. People begin to create receipts, create documentation just to outsmart. Understand this, brothers and sisters. 
not all opportunities are harvest. Some opportunities are seeds. Am I communicating? Some opportunities are seeds. God will just bring them to you to test you. So when you, when you, when you grab every opportunity as though it's a harvest, you corrupt the future. Is somebody getting me at all here? We have too many people today in our generation with wrong hearts. Wrong heart, wrong heart, wrong heart, wrong heart, wrong heart. That God really wants to bless you. It's time to get the job you've been praying for. It's time to become a better person. It's time for God to reward you. It's time for God to promote you. And God has said, this is the due season. But your heart is not right. Many people are just looking for the next opportunity to make it big. You saw what scripture said. He that make it haste to be rich will not be innocent. He must do something bad. Because that's what it means now. That person that is hasty, he wants to make it big. All my friends have gone ahead of me. My family has blessed something of me. My wife needs this. My husband needs this. My children needs this. He's now hasty to make it big. He will not be innocent. Somebody with me here. Brothers and sisters, I beg you. If only you come to an understanding today that everything in life is a seed. How you handle it determines the harvest you get. You can determine the seed you sow, but you cannot determine the harvest you get. Are, are you getting me now? I'll put it this way seeds can be controlled, harvest cannot be controlled. Am I communicating here? Uh, you can say, okay, let me sow pineapple. So long you have sown pineapple, you will reap pineapple. So long you have sown oranges, eat prayer or no prayer, you will reap oranges. So you must understand that many things, if not everything in life, is a seed. Am I communicating here? I believe it is the heart of God that once more we have faithful people diligent people, whether in the corporate world, whether in businesses, whether as entrepreneurs, whether in short people who have entered a covenant with God, just like Job, just like Joseph, that they will not offend God, nor offend man, but will stand on the path of truth. Is somebody with me here? We also see a man called Daniel. Daniel was faithful in Babylon. So faithful that God made him relevant for several seasons. Several seasons, a man was relevant. You know, seasons came, seasons passed. The only constant in the seasons was Daniel. Somebody understanding me at all now? 2001 came, 2002 came, 2009 came. The only constant in, in, in all these years in a nation was a man. Do you know what it means to be vice president in several dispensations? Every president that comes needs his own man. But God saw a man who was sold out. Faithful in service. Faithful to God. And God said people like this must always remain relevant. Brothers and sisters, we also saw very clearly that when people conspired against Daniel, people came together and said, let us bring this guy down. Let us mess this guy up. Let us make sure he has no integrity in this government. We saw clearly that because of his faithfulness to work, there was no, no opportunity. The people said, they testified. They said, someone like this cannot be framed up. He is too faithful. Every great man is a helped man. Every dreamer needs a dream interpreter. Until you understand the place of helpers, you may struggle endlessly in life. Every successful man is a product of help. Sule Manuel shares this practical revelation and many more in this prophetic material titled, My Helpers Locate Me. Where there are no helpers, a vision will perish. Without helpers, a dreamer will die with his dreams unfulfilled. In this powerful book, Sule Manuel shares uncommon truth from God's word. You will discover why you need helpers. What happens when helpers step out of your life? 
powerful kingdom secrets to attract relevant men to your life. How to secure helpers for your generations yet unborn. This book also prayerfully ends with prophetic breakthrough prayer points to crush the yoke of delay and average life. Get a copy of My Helpers Locate Me and your testimony will be the next to be celebrated. To order for copies and have it delivered to you anywhere in the world, please call plus 234-803-577-6676 or plus 234-705-485-1181 or plus 277-123-0330 or plus 27110-666-342. You can also get copies at our bookshop at Omega Fire Ministry International Headquarters, Awuchi Edo State, Nigeria, or Omega Fire Ministry, Ramberg, South Africa. You can also make purchases online when you visit www.suleimanuel.com. For all inquiries, send an email to info at suleimanuel.com. God bless you. Hello there, Sule Emmanuel is my name, Pastor Omega Fire Ministry, Randberg, in Johannesburg, South Africa. It is a home to a great people experiencing the miraculous and growing in a deeper relationship with Jesus every day. Are you tired of spiritual dryness? Do you desire to grow in your walk with God? Do you desire to be in a place where you'll experience the grace and the glory of God in a new dimension? I invite you to be my guest this Sunday by 9 a.m. for a destiny restoration and fruitfulness service at Omega Fire Ministry in Randburg. At every service in OFM Randburg, the power of God is present to heal, to save, to restore, and to deliver destinies. At OFM Randburg, God is turning the zeros of yesterday to heroes today, giving hope to the hopeless, giving direction to destinies. So it does not matter where you are in life now. It doesn't matter what life has dealt you with. As you become a part of these houses, you join me this Sunday by 9 a.m. The God of Apostle Johnson Suleiman will put a smile on your face and you will experience a turnaround in your story. But if you live in East London, in Mpumalanga, in Jeminstein, in Pretoria, in Mamilodi, we've got amazing grace-soaked worship centers in this location. And there are firebrand preachers waiting to receive you this Sunday, also by 9 a.m. Call the number on your screen right now and you'll be told the address of our church in East London, in Mpumalanga, in Jeminstein, in Pretoria, in Mamilodi, you know, so you can be part of what God is doing in this great commission. But if you live anywhere in Johannesburg, be my guest this Sunday in Randburg for a destiny restoration encounter. Your life will never be the same again. Jesus will meet you at the point of your need. The address again is Omega Fire Ministry, Randburg, Corner Paris Avenue and Bordeaux Drive, opposite the Randburg Taxi Rank, Randburg in Johannesburg. You may call the number that's displayed on the screen now. Someone is waiting to speak with you and provide further assistance how you can be part of our service this Sunday. I'm looking forward to receiving you, to praying for you and to trusting God to do new things in your life. I pray for you today that your season of rest begins from now. Your season of enlargement begins from now. Whoever has vowed to use what they have to cause you tears, may God use what he has to cause them tears. I decree that this year you will experience favor like never before. I'm looking forward to receiving you this Sunday by 9 a.m. at Omega Fire Ministry Randwick. The Lord bless you. Power to excel.